Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, my very biased collection, of course. Um, today is not really time for a theorem or this video which not really covers theorem, but rather an idea, a really cute idea, which you can call tropical geometry or which people call tropical geometry to be completely precise. I will um, elaborate on the name in a second. It's kind of a weird name, tropical geometry. But anyway, so I'm not really going to explain tropical geometry as a whole. That's a whole field of mathematics. That's a little bit too much for one YouTube video, but I would rather focus on tropical polynomials or more specifically, I would show you what a tropical curve is. Kind of the whole point will be that this tropical geometry is somehow much, much easier in a certain sense, much, much easier than classical geometry. So the study of uh, algebraic geometry, if you want, so the study of curves. And it kind of has the same type of theorems and there's a bouncing back effect between the two. So you can play one theory against the other, which is pretty cool because as I said, in some sense, the tropical version is easier than the classical version. In the end, kind of the classical version is what you want to do, or uh, maybe not, maybe nowadays the, the focus is a little bit shifted. But anyway, let's say the classical version is the one you want to do. And there's a tropical one, which is easier uh, in practice. And in some sense, tropical geometry is more combinatorics than geometry. So before we get into the details, so into the details of my straight curves, YouTube details, of course, not really details. So everything is linked in the description, very nice books on the topic and so on. Anyway, before we go into the details, let me uh, kind of tell you the story why it's called tropical geometry. So what is so tropical about geometry? Uh, that's a good question. In some sense, it's a misnomer. In some sense, actually, it's a pretty good name in hindsight, but it, still, it's a very misnomer. There is no tropical or whatever. So um, French mathematicians have named tropical geometry after a Brazilian mathematician. So appar apparently, tropical is what French people think about Brazil. Um, I leave it to you now to wonder what would have happened, how would it be called if a Brazilian mathematician would have named it after French mathematicians. I don't know. Um, I should have actually said that the Brazilian was not a mathematician, but rather a computer scientist, one of the, um, Imre Simon, one of the um, pioneers in the field. But anyway, kind of the story here is there is not really anything tropical about tropical geometry. It's just what kind of what French people think about Brazil. Anyway, so let's jump into the math and not, let's not complain about tropical geometry. So everything I'm going to say will have the adjective tropical here and there, which is kind of cool, right? So you can kind of remember it. I just keep in mind, as I said, it doesn't really have to do anything. It's tropical. So whatever, misnomer, whatever. Okay, so tropical arithmetic is kind of the basis for tropical geometry, for tropical polynomials. Um, strictly speaking, there's something that calls a tropical semi-ring. Anyway, so let's just explain it. Um, so classically, let's work over R of the real numbers. Why not, right? Our world would be R. Um, our addition is, well, addition, <laughs> whatever we know as addition. Our multiplication is multiplication. Uh, the zero element is the zero element. And what a surprise, the one element is the one element. Um, not very surprising. Yeah, it's kind of classical and classical geometry builds on classical arithmetic and tropical geometry builds on tropical arithmetic. So let's have a look at tropical arithmetic. It's kind of a really shocking concept if you see it for the first time. So the world now is R and you take in infinity as well. You'll see in a second why. And addition, very complicated now. So let us be very, very slow here. Addition, which I write in this funny symbol, just the, the plus with a uh, circle around. Addition is taking the minimum of two numbers, right? So tropical addition is taking the minimum. So nine plus four tropically is four, right? Because four is the smaller one of the two. Uh, four plus infinity is four because four is smaller than infinity. And yeah, that's just the reason why you take infinity into account because infinity serves as a zero element of this funny addition. Addition is taking minimum, right? Everything is smaller than, than infinity. So uh, it's kind of the zero element under addition. That's already kind of a little bit funny. So how on earth should minimum, minimum be uh, being addition? Well, we'll see in a second. But let's discuss multiplication now. So multiplication, which I will write in tropical multiplication, which I will write using this funny symbol, um, the product in a circle, is the usual addition. 
okay, now it gets really complicated, right? P multiplication is addition and addition is taking minimum. Well, that's kind of a little bit weird, but honestly, it's only weird because we are used to the classical one just uh, for ages, right? So it's not, not really in any sense weird that um, addition is taking minimum and multiplication is addition. So let's have a look at here at an example. So nine times four is now 13. Hope I haven't miscalculated. So it's just five, four plus nine. And four times zero is four. So zero is now the one element in this tropical uh, arithmetic. Well, that's a little bit strange. As I said, you need, you need some time to get your, get your head around it because it's, it's kind of, we're not used to it, but it's not really hard. I will try to convince you in the next slide and the slide after that it's not really hard. It just takes some time to, as I said, wrap your head, head around it. And honestly, this is, and I call it, this is usually called the tropical semi-ring. It's T usually. Um, and it's exactly this structure and it satisfies everything you kind of want to uh, structure to satisfy. It's distributive, associative, commutative. For example, you could do something like this. Um, if you want to pause the video now and want to check whether I have messed up here my calculation, so three times in brackets, seven plus 10, tropically is 10. Let's hope the best that this is true. But um, in any way, it's not really hard to do the calculation. It's actually pretty simple as we will see now. So um, as a young student, you might need to remember addition and multiplication table. And this might be a bit tricky. So the addition table in classical arithmetic is kind of okay. <laughs> it's actually the multiplication table in tropical arithmetic. So it's pretty simple. You have two, three, four, five, right? So um, multiplication one times one uh, is two because one plus one is two. You have a six, seven, eight, seven times three is 10 because it's just the usual plus. So this is the classical plus table and this is the min table, which is now the addition and the multiplication table. So the addition table is ridiculously simple. Just, uh, we could just read it off here. So ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six, seven. So uh, every elementary school Kid would be happy to have those additional multiplication table, right? They're really, really easy. Uh, just try to write down the multiplication table in classical arithmetic. I mean, it's not really hard, obviously, but it's still much harder than everything you see here on this slide. So tropical arithmetic is actually pretty simple, right? You have the addition table and the multiplication table. And they're really, really simple. They're just minimum and addition. So tropical geometry, uh, tropical uh, arithmetic is surprisingly easy. It's really, really simple in some sense. And the idea is kind of now let's let's do a mathematics over this funny new ring and let's hope that everything gets a little bit easier, right? Kind of in this specific example, of course, geometry, not just random mathematics, but people also try to do kind of any kind of mathematics uh, over, those, over those rings. But anyway, geometry is the most popular one. So let's just stick with geometry here. Um, so I should say that easy is, of course, in huge quotation marks, but what does easy mean? So it's not, it has some flaws. So you don't have a subtraction. It's kind of, kind of a little bit strange because you can't subtract, okay? Um, but it's the in inverse of minimum. Minimum doesn't have an inverse operation like minus. So this is a little bit flawed. So solving linear equations, it's a little bit ranky here. So you can't do that all that easily. But let's ignore that. Um, at least you can divide by zero, right? You can divide by zero, absolutely. Think about it for a second. Yes, you can divide by zero in tropical geometry, which I find uh, makes me very happy. Uh, anyway, so tropical geometry should now be um, the geometry built on this arithmetic, which looks pretty simple. And in most cases, it is actually really, really much easier than classical arithmetic. And well, if you know that this is kind of the underlying ring field, whatever the underlying numbers that you want to use, then you can write down polynomials and you can write down polynomial equations. So here's an example of a tropical polynomial. Um, it's, it's what you would write, right? You, in classical arithmetic, you might write, want to write down this polynomial x plus y cubed, and you would factor it in something like x cubed, and then you would have three x squared y and you have three x y squared and you have y cubed. 
thread plus 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 and so on. Okay, this would be the classical one and the tropical version is actually much easier because what is so complicated about this polynomial are the coefficients. Uh, so here I would have one, three, three, one. And here I just have, well, the standard coefficients which are zero, right? Remember zero is one. So if I omit a symbol here, it's actually zero. So the coefficients are very, dis very complicated. But as I said, it just takes a while to get your head around it is much easier. So here the coefficients are zero, 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 and zero actually. And fun exercise, you can try to do this yourself. The tropical Pascal triangle is uh, this beautiful beast here. It's much, much simpler than the usual Pascal triangle uh, with the binomials, right? So now it's just zero, zeros everywhere, which uh, I think that's, that's again, pretty easy to remember. Uh, very similar to our additional multiplication table. Very, very simple to remember. And then now you can just think about classical lines and classic tropical lines. They, they will look a little bit strange because you have different kind of geometry. They will look like this, right? So like this, I am, I'm not sure how to describe it, like a tripod in some sense. Uh, and it's just exactly the same. You need to be a bit careful. The definition changes slightly, but you still have to know, be more precise on the next slide. But I will still have, uh, we still have kind of the same associated things uh, to polynomials. You have curves, you have cubics, quadrics, circles, parabola, hyperbola, all these things. You can all, all talk about all of them in the tropical sense. Just add ad adjective tropical everywhere, right? Rem remember that's kind of the whole point here. Uh, Brazil, very tropical, so ad adjective tropical everywhere so that everyone is happy. And then the, the tropical vanishing set or the tropical curves is um, you have some polynomial and you take kind of whenever the minimum is achieved twice. That's kind of the correct definition of being a root of a polynomial. Okay, so there's roots of the polynomial. Okay, so this is kind of this part here and in, in, in two variables. In this multi-dimensional version of it, but in two variables, the ones I showed you, will show you here and here and on the next slide, and they were here. Um, they are called tropical curves, the title of this video. So tropical curve is like a curve in, in general, and the curve in general is just a zero set of, uh, so the zeros of a polynomial in two variables, and here it's just the same. You just need to adjust the notion of what, is, what it means to be a root a little bit, um, but this is a correct definition in this tropical way of doing it. So the tropical way of doing it here, it gets a little bit fishy. It's not as natural as you would think it is, but if you think about it for a second or maybe for a minute, you will actually, would actually come up with kind of the same definition. So it's pretty brilliant in hindsight. It's kind of obvious, but um, it's actually really, really a brilliant idea. It's this tropical idea. Anyway, so the theorem I would like to discuss today is kind of this meta type of theorem. Um, and people work on this. So this is pretty much work in progress, but most of the classical results already have a tropical analog. And it kind of the theorem, the meta theorem here should be that any statement you know from classical geometry has a nicer version in tropical geometry, just a nicer cousin in tropical geometry. And as far as we know, that it's true for a lot of, lot of statements. Um, I'll show you one of them, one of my favorites on the next slide. Right, so the um, point is here you have the notion of all of them. You have a uh, tropical uh, line. This is a line here, a conic, a cubic, etc. Whatever the next one would be. Um, kind of a little bit sad here that I can't do those. I could have done those pictures myself, but I was just too lazy. I stole them from a very nice uh, page linked in the description. And well, Though th these guys or the, the authors use max instead of min. So you can do tropical geometry in exactly the same way by using max here instead of min. And everything kind of flips around. Still the same, uh, but it doesn't really matter. But note that this curve, this is a min curve. This is how the mid tropical min line looks like. And this one, which is a tropical max line. So the max line goes like this and the min line uh, goes exactly in the opposite way. This is the mean line. So up to flipping pictures, it's really the same. I apologize that I'm just too lazy and I just stole them. I hope uh, you stay with me. Anyway, so now in tropical geometry, you can write down 
circles, parabolas, whatever. And you have those nice statements like a, a line in classical geometry intersects a circle in two points. And same is kind of true in tropical geometry. So the line, again, back to minimum, uh, no, still with maximum here. So this is still the maximum. Um, you can see it because it looks like this. Um, in the maximum, uh, the blue, the line intersects the quadric, the, the red in two points. It's kind of really the same state. So this meta theorem tells us that everything we know from classical geometry has a cousin in tropical geometry. And this is pretty true. This is really, really true for whatever. It's still work in progress for something. Certainly, this is a huge area of mathematics, but kind of the classical theorems are all well known by now, at least. Um, you might ask, is this a really modern version of mathematics? Yeah, it is really, really modern. It's kind of from the 90s where it really, where it really, really started. So 1990s, that's really modern for mathematics compared to classical geometry. The study of whatever, ellipses, yeah, the old Greeks did that already. Pretty brilliant idea, as I said, and then much easier. So here's an example of how it gets much easier, and it's still kind of the same. So there's a very famous theorem called Bethus theorem, Bethus theorem, and it's pretty cool. It's a kind of very easy way to count intersections of curves. You just take the degrees of the curve. So here, this one here is my degree four curve, and the lying parabola is my degree two curve, and the number of intersections generically should be two times four, so eight, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. So eight intersections, two times four. And the same is true in tropical geometry. So I didn't find a good picture of four times two, but I have a picture of two times two. So uh, the two is this guy here is one of them. And the other one is the, the one in thick and they intersect in four points. It's really kind of this beautiful theorem. If you want to count intersections of curves, I look at the degrees and it's, it should be generically the product of the degrees. Turns out that in classical geometry, you need to be a bit careful. You need to work with projective curves over the complex numbers. Otherwise it doesn't quite work. And then generically you have this nice theorem that degrees, degree M and N curves intersect in M times N points, right? Four times two is eight. Uh, four times four is four. Should have written it down. And, um, over in tropical geometry, you kind of can drop some of those adjectives. So in tropical geometry, the statement is better in some sense, as I said before. It's still kind of really, really cute. I mean, it's really, really cute, right? It's a really nice way of counting intersections of curves. And it has a classical counterpart and a tropical counterpart. And the tropical counterpart is a little bit easier because classically, you need to add some adjectives, some restrictions to your theorem to make it really true. Tropically, it's just slicker. And it's kind of the same for most of those theorems. Again, this is just a meta theorem, so it depends on the theorem at hand, of course. Anyway, um, I'm going to wrap up the video now. So tropical geometry, which I really haven't addressed. So tropical geometry is a study of tropical curves in one way or the other. It's built on tropical arithmetic, which is this funny arithmetic where you use minimum as an addition and multiplication as an addition which is just much easier. Remember Pascal's triangle, a tropical Pascal's triangle. It's just zeros everywhere. I can remember that. I can tell you what happens in line 512. Um, I also could do that for Pascal's triangle. It's just, just, it's just much easier than the standard Pascal's triangle. Anyway, so it's built on this kind of easier arithmetic and the geometry gets easier in some sense. And the arithmetic, kind of every statement in classical arithmetic has a tropical counterpart, which is easier. Every statement in classical geometry has a tropical counterpart, which is easier, which I find very impressive. And nowadays, there's a lot of mathematics going back and forth between them. So you want to prove something in tropical geometry, you use the classical geometry because it's just older and more statements are known. Or you want to prove something in classical geometry and you use the tropical geometry because it's just easier to do. It's more like a combinatorial uh, argument or a combinatorial game you need to play. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.